So then all you do is you press the super cruise button and the car starts to drive itself. Ow! What the? You put your hands back on the wheel right now! But Grandma, the car drives itself, see? Ow! Hands at 10 and 2! Okay, fine. I'll, I'll keep my hands on the wheel. Ow! What was that for? Because I'm old and I can do what I want. Now take me to the senior center. Tonight we're having pot and getting lucky. You mean you're having a potluck? No, I mean we're playing bingo. And Dorothy has glaucoma. She shares. Hello and welcome to the inside of the Escalade. This is probably where all of today's video will be taking place because, well, it's 26 degrees in Texas. How dare they? Uh, so today's video is about Super Cruise and before we get started with that, I'm gonna go over a few of the buttons here. So over here on the left side of the steering wheel, you got your cruise control section here. Uh, you just, you start with your regular cruise control, you turn it on, you get your little cruise control icon up there. You've got cancel up and down, one little click up, does one mile an hour, you go past the detent, you get five miles an hour up or down. That's a pretty cool little feature. Right here, this is your Super Cruise button. So this is what turns Super Cruise on. And then this little button right here that shows you uh, going real fast and crashing into another car, that sets your distance for how far the radar cruise control keeps you behind the car in front of you. And with that, let's take a trip out to the highway and get into not driving. Yes. So as we make our way out to the highway, let's talk about what Super Cruise is real quick. It is a driver assistance feature, not a self-driving feature. Don't call it that, people get angry. But a driver assistance feature that drives for you on certain highways so it it drives itself super cruise is available on over 200,000 miles of highway in the u.s and canada those have to be divided highways though so if you have a little two-lane highway no divider not going to work there it is available on the cadillac ct4 ct5 the escalade we're now in 22 so it's on the gmc sierra the chevy silverado and gm plans to roll this out to 22 gm models in the near future so we are on the highway now on a road that supports super cruise so all we have to do is turn our cruise control system on a uh, little indicator on the screen here comes up and shows a steering wheel that lets you know super cruise is available you hit the super cruise button down here and it takes over uh, this time it immediately went to uh, this green bar that you see here sometimes it will first be blue blue means it is acquiring you need to hold onto the wheel until it turns green like this once it's green you can let go and the car is now driving itself we're getting into a little bit of traffic here, so it's slowing down, keeping our distance from the car in front of us, and well, it's, it's just kind of magic. So there is a little camera down here on top of the steering wheel column, and it monitors your head position. So if you look away from the road too long, this bar up here will start flashing red, your seat will start vibrating, and it will try and get your attention to bring your head back forward and pay attention to the road. So that's one thing about Super Cruise, you have to pay attention because at any time, the car could say, hey, you need to take control and you need to be ready to do that. Oh gosh. So someone just tried to cut us off. The car slammed on the brakes and that's, it's one of the unsettling things. Like the car will make jerky movements sometimes like that. Like if somebody's cutting you off, yes, you need to slam on the brakes. But sometimes when like going around corners, it, it's not the smoothest, it'll correct. And it'll, you know, it's, it's just a little bit unsettling since you're not the one driving. Uh, you know, supposedly a computer can drive better than a human, but sometimes it just feels like I should be the one in control. So yeah, we have the cruise control set to 70. It is slowing down now. We're doing what, 14, 13. Super Cruise will go all the way down to zero miles an hour. It will stop the car. The engine will turn off with auto start stop. And then whenever traffic starts going again, it will restart and keep you going on your way. And there you have it. We are in enough traffic now that we just hit zero miles an hour. The car just turned off. Now we're slightly moving again and it started back up. Three miles an hour. Carry on. So traffic is one of the things I think Super Cruise actually does really well. It's actually, it's almost relaxing. So it's almost like all of these people around me are in traffic and I'm just sitting here. I don't have to hit the gas, the brakes. I don't have to change the lanes if I don't want to. The car is just driving me in traffic and it's, it's less stressful. I don't think traffic is as stressful when you're using Super Cruise. I mean, if you have somewhere to go when you're late, probably not going to help out with that but if you're on time and you just need the car to drive you through traffic it's pretty good 
So what do you do with your hands while you're super cruising? Turns out there's a lot you can do. You can enjoy a nice bowl of soup. Ooh, that's hot. You can play your favorite card game. No, I don't have a gassy antelope. Go fish. Sorry, I lied, I had a gassy antelope. You can read your favorite book. <laughs> oh, cat, you're always getting into trouble. Since getting the car with Super Cruise, I've learned how to quilt. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, like you really do need to pay attention. Like at any point in time, Super Cruise can throw up its hands, say, hey, you need to take control and you need to know what's going on around you in order to like speed up, slow down, swerve. You just, you need to know what's going on. So Super Cruise is on, but let's say you're stuck behind a slow gas truck or something. You want to get over a lane. Super Cruise has a feature called auto lane change. And the way that works is you tap up or down on the blinker stalk, the direction you want to go and the car will change lanes for you. So we're going to go left. Uh, it's looking for an opening. And now that there's an opening, it's going to get us over. Then the adaptive cruise control speeds you back up past the gas truck. The only bad thing about auto lane change is it's a little bit too polite. So if you're in heavy traffic, there's cars whizzing by you, it's it's not gonna get you over. You're gonna have to take control of yourself and get yourself over. It's, it's pretty safe about when it looks for an open spot, make sure it has enough room, which is good. So one of the bad things about auto lane change is that it doesn't automatically change lanes even though it does. And what I mean by that is like, you can initiate auto lane change by pushing up or down on the blinker. But let's say you got your cruise control set to 70, the guy in front of you is doing 60, it won't automatically change lanes and go around him even if there's room. That is as of today. So there's supposed to be an update in 2022 and auto lane change will be truly automatic. If you're set to 70, guy in front of you is doing 50, it'll go around him and change lanes for you. So let's say you do want to take control of yourself. What do you do? So just like regular cruise control, step on the brakes, everything's going to turn off here. It starts flashing red, tells you you need to take control because you're disengaging super cruise. You can also temporarily disable the system by just grabbing the wheel and driving. So let's say I want to get over a lane, but I don't want super cruise to do it. I'm just going to grab the wheel, get over. The wheel turns blue to let you know super cruise is no longer in control and you need to take the wheel. Once it reacquires, it's green, you can let go again. So we're about to get into a little bit of traffic here. And this is probably one of the things I don't like about Super Cruise is I can see traffic slowing down. Super Cruise is still doing 60 right now and all of a sudden it slams on the brakes. It, in my opinion, it brakes too soon, too close to the traffic. I'm sure it's still technically safe or something like that. But for me, it's just a little bit unsettling. I would prefer braked a little bit sooner. And maybe one of the ways to fix that is this gap adjust here. So if you have adaptive cruise control, you probably have the same feature. You can set the distance that the auto cruise control keeps from the far in front of you. You have like close, medium, and far. I keep mine set on medium. I find that close is like a little bit too close for comfort with the computer driving the car. It's always like last minute if something goes wrong. Medium seems to be a safe distance. And if you choose far, everybody's just cutting you off all the time. So that one, I don't like it. So I said earlier, sometimes Super Cruise is too polite. It's also impolite sometimes. So let's say you're on the highway, Super Cruising, and there's an on-ramp. You got a car coming up on the on-ramp, they're supposed to be merging and paying attention, and they're not, uh, which happens pretty often around here. So Super Cruise will not speed up, it will not slow down, it will not make accommodations for the car that's merging into you. It's a little scary sometimes in those situations. I typically take over, speed up, slow down myself. Uh, but it's, it's one thing that I don't know if Super Cruise needs to change, but someone should be paying attention when you're merging. So we're about to have some other cars merge into our lane because their lane is ending. And Super Cruise is being very impolite right now. It is not letting this guy over. He's going to get over anyways. Super Cruise is hitting the gas. Oh, slamming on the brakes. They got over. So if you notice over to the left of us, there is a toll lane. That's the Tex Express lanes in Texas. You can pay to go faster. Uh, Super Cruise does work in the toll lanes. That's one of the questions I had when I bought the car. It's basically a private highway and is that mapped? And the answer, at least in the North Texas area, is yes. Where Super Cruise does not work though is places like uh, construction zones, bad weather, places where visibility is reduced. Uh, if there's objects in the road. So the other day, actually, I had a tire in the middle of the road. I saw it from pretty far off. Super Cruise was on. I was like, what's it going to do? So we got closer to the tire and closer and closer. And eventually Super Cruise just threw its hands up, turned red, said, you know what? You take over, you deal with it. So I swerved around the tire. Uh, yeah, objects in the road, 
doesn't work for that. Towing was a big question I had whenever I got this. Uh, does Super Cruise work when you're towing a trailer? Today, the answer is no, uh, but luckily that's just today. So the 2022 uh, GMC and Chevy trucks that have Super Cruise, they're supposed to be able to tow with Super Cruise engaged and multiple places have reported that there's gonna be an over the air update for the Escalade sometime in 2022. And then it will also be able to tow with Super Cruise on which I think is gonna be a huge win. Like towing a big trailer long distances is one of the most stressful things I think you can do. And if Super Cruise can take the stress of towing out for you, that's gonna be awesome. So we are on an exit ramp right now to go from one highway to another highway. And this is one of the things that I don't think works that well. So, nope, oh, it just turned off. So Super Cruise, works for a period of time, but whenever it's time to merge, whether you're merging on the ramp or you're merging after you get off the ramp and up back onto the highway, it won't do that. Super Cruise will not merge. And I'm not sure that's necessarily something that's like wrong with Super Cruise, it's just a feature it doesn't have it. Well, here we go again, it's turning back off. And one of the things I don't like about that, whenever it turns off like that, the adaptive cruise control stays on. So let's say Super Cruise slows you down to like 50 miles an hour because it wants you to take control. Once you take control, it will automatically it guns the throttle and it will start speeding you back up to 70 miles an hour. And it's just, it's not intuitive. Like you wouldn't think it would do that. I would expect it to like, once Super Cruise disengages, I would expect the adaptive cruise control to also disengage, but it doesn't work that way. It stays on and it speeds you right back up. So we're coming up on another ramp here, and this is another good thing about Super Cruise is, say we have this cruise control set to 70 miles an hour, and it thinks you should only take the curve at 50, it's gonna automatically slow you down to the appropriate speed so you don't tip over on the curve. You get this little windy icon on the screen, and Super Cruise slows you right down. So I feel like I've said a lot of things about like what Super Cruise isn't good at, so what is it good for? So we already said traffic. It's, I think it's great in traffic and long distances, so let's say, you're driving from Dallas to Houston, you get on I-45 and your GPS says drive 230 miles. You can set Super Cruise and then not take, not touch the wheel for 230 miles. Is Super Cruise worth it and would I buy it again? Uh, bit of a loaded answer on that one. So I already mentioned in a prior video that Super Cruise is advertised as a $2,500 option, but at least on the trim level of Escalade we bought, you had to buy an additional $20,000 worth of options in order to be able to have the option to buy Super Cruise. So it winds up being about a $22,000 option. One more thing I just found out recently, it only works for three years. You heard me right, like you pay $22,000 for it and it works for three years. Super Cruise is a subscription service. It's like through OnStar or whatever, and your subscription only lasts for three years. After three years, if you don't wanna start paying GM, it gets turned off, not just like, so I understand that GM is out there like mapping new roads, adding new highways all the time. And, and I get that that costs something and that needs to be paid for, but just turning the entire system off after three years, that doesn't sit well with me at all. I feel like it should be more of like one of those old GPS map based systems. Like you get a set of maps and if you want more maps, you can go buy them. But you know, you have your set of maps and that works forever basically. The fact that I'm gonna have to start paying GM $25 a month, probably two years from now to, in order to use the $22,000 option I bought and have already paid for, I don't like that at all. So personally, would I buy it again? I'm not, I'm not sure I would. Like I really wanted to try it out. I really wanted to have a self-driving car for long drives, stuff like that, but I'm not sure it's smart enough yet. I'm not sure it's where I think it needs to be to be worth $22,000. If you're already gonna get all the other stuff anyways, and it's only gonna cost you 2,500 bucks, you know what, sure, go ahead. But just $22,000 price tag for something that's only gonna work for three years, and then you have to keep paying for, ah, I don't like it. So that's just my opinion though, and my opinion is usually wrong. So, uh, you know, make your own decision by Super Cruise if you want to or not. Again, though, the towing thing, that could be awesome. Maybe that'll make it worth it. We'll, we'll have to see later in the year. Uh, if an over there update does come out, maybe I'll do another video on that. So until then, well, we're, we're in traffic again. So until next time, I think I'm just gonna have Super Cruise drive me through traffic. See you later. Grandma, I don't want to be rude, but you're kind of starting to grow a beard.
Oh, honey, I know. I've thought about shaving it, but it reminds me of your grandfather. He always liked the way it felt when I would 